today that they separate and they dress themselves out from what they the the main mainstream is doing right so the trench coat figured I'm not looking like them so we're gonna make our own little club right we're gonna become something that they're not and this is who we are and if you like it or don't that doesn't matter that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. My daughter started dressing totally different. She started dyeing her hair. She cut off her hair. She did anything. And it's all attention getting, but it's also a way of separating themselves from that group that they're not accepted by and saying, look at me, I'm me. So if you see that your child is doing this, dressing different or whatever, and you think that it's to get attention, how are you supposed to approach them? Talk Your to recommendation. Them. You need to talk to them. You need to find out. You need to be not their friend because that's important not to be their friend as right. much as their parent. But you need to find out on a daily basis how school going. Now, most well, what if go, they start shut you out? And I was going to say most kids fine. will go. It's fine. But if you have that open communication where you let them talk and you don't judge them and give them feedback of, well, I do it this way. Remember what it was like when you were a kid. Right. Remember how hard it was. What if you don't have that open line of communication? How can you get there? You know, Jessica, that's a tough one. You have to start slowly. You have to start building that rapport and that trust. You know, you have to give that child the knowledge that you believe in them and that you know they'll make the right decisions. You right. Know? You, you know, as hard as it sometimes can be. And one of the other things that's important the day that my daughter committed suicide, I had gone up and she had a 38 or 40 caliber gun sitting by her side. Did you know she did? Yeah, I saw it and I was going to reach for it. I called my therapist who made a mistake by telling me to leave. Mm -hmm. I also made another mistake and I can't beat myself up for these because right. what is is and it's hard. It's true. You know? But I w didn't call the police because I knew she had a warrant possibly for a traffic ticket. Mm. Oh, who cares? Right. They wouldn't have cared about that. Whether they would have gotten there on time or not is, you know, not, guess, yeah. yeah. But take the time, get the help. I don't care if your child's kicks, screams, whatever, get them to a therapist, get them to your family doctor to make sure it's not a chemical imbalance or whatever. Find out if you can't communicate with them, take them to where they can communicate. So tell us how you dealt with your daughter's suicide, the aftermath of it. You know, in the beginning, I had to make a life or death decision for myself because having been there myself, and that's another statistic, uh, Jessica, is that if you have family members that have been there, mm -hmm. the statistics say that it's much greater that for a teen will also be there. Mm -hmm. My mom was um, a um, suicide tendency. Right. You know, and then I was, and now my daughter, who did complete the act. Uh. But, um, oh, I'm sorry, your question, you were saying. Oh, no, I was asking about the aftermath, how you dealt with it. It was very difficult. Like I said, I had to make a decision, life or death. And having been there, it would have been easy for me to have made the death, death decision and mm -hmm. join her. But I had to look at the rest of my family and what this was doing to me. And if that my, the rest of my family, my other daughter, would have lost me, where would she have been? Mm. I made that day a decision to make a difference and to be here for the rest of my life, however that meant and right. looked. Um, since that time, I have um, I make it a point every day to look at the good. I can't even imagine being that depressed me again. Right. I can't even fathom that dark corner tunnel that I used to be in. Things do get better. Remember high school is just a very small passing Transition phase. stage. Those kids that are putting you down today, they're not gonna be there tomorrow when, if you're a scholar, when you're out there making the big bucks, when you're dressing the way you right. want to after 18, whatever. Stand on your own, know that they're not gonna be there when you're out on your own. Time does get better. Today I'm doing what I've always wanted to do in my life, and at my age, which I'm not gonna say, it is amazing that when I was three years old, my dream is now happening in, in my 50s. But I also think that people don't need to be scared of the word suicide. No. And don't be ashamed to talk about it and say, you know what, this happened. I remember whenever I was in high school and I had attempted suicide, my 
friend had said something, you know, nonchalantly about it, and I was just kind of like, okay, yeah, okay, let's change the subject, you know, let's not talk about it. And it was weird because when I did it, I, the counselor at school said, you have to go see a therapist. And I kept saying, I'm not crazy, I'm not crazy, I'm not going to go see a therapist. Because, you know, 13 years ago, I didn't know anybody who had seen a therapist. No one in my family had, had ever gone. And now it's a lot more common for people to go see a therapist. But back then, I just thought that crazy people saw them, you know, and I wasn't crazy, so I'm not going. But I think that that's the key is just making that first step. Exactly. And actually, I always say the therapist was like the best experience that happened mm -hmm. to me because they taught me so, or she taught me so much about myself and about my perspective and how I see things and, you know, how I react to things and everything, things that I never considered as a teenager. It's I mean, amazing that you said that because I say that to people exactly when they say, well, how do you want, why would you want to share that you've been in a hospital setting for suicide or depression? That was the best thing I could have ever done right. for myself. I now know what makes me tick. Exactly. It's amazing. And, and why I did the things I did or do today. Exactly. And I can walk with my head up. I have self-esteem. I don't look for the pat on the back to come from external. Exactly. I come from internal and I know when I'm doing good and it's not as important to hear it from the outside. And you know, and you said something important earlier or something that I just felt is that you can't imagine going back there. And that's how I am. It's like I'm I've never been happier. I'm doing what I want and it's I don't want to say, you know, it takes a dark place cuz you know, it's been 13 years since that's happened, but I can't ever imagine even remotely being back there because you know, the things that you think are important as a teenager are are really not important in life you know, at all. The saddest, not to diminish the saddest you know, what you part think is that important. I have to look at every day is the work that I'm in now is what my daughter wanted to do. You know, she was a singer and an actress. So you kind of doing it for her too? She's there with me every time. She's always there. I feel her. I know she's there. But to think that if she had only hung on, a little I bit didn't longer. realize how easy it was to break into what I'm doing. And um, she thought she, that was part of her depression is she thought she was too fat, she thought she was too ugly and that she'd never get anywhere. And had she just hung on, you know, we could have been there together. And the thing is that, you know, people need to realize that there's always going to be someone thinner than you, always someone exactly. better than looking, always someone stronger, whatever, but to be happy with who you are. And, you know, what I was saying earlier, you know, things that are important to you as a teenager are not when you're an adult. That's not to diminish what's important as a teenager, but just to realize that you'll get past it. It's just, like we said, it's just a phase that you have to go through. It's part of life, unfortunately. Yeah. And just, you know, hang on one more day for things to get better. Go talk to someone, you know. You know, if I had anything to say, I would say that that's the most important thing is to get to a therapist. You know, when I had no one else to talk with, I knew the I could pick up my there. phone and talk to my therapist anytime. And there was no judgment, but there was. Right. Um, conclusion and and ways to get past it. Um, I think that's the hardest thing is not having someone that you can talk to about the problems. Right. You know. I mean, today even I still have a therapist that I see now and then, and it's not because I feel like I need them. It's because there are those little issues that mm -hmm. you know when when the anniversary of Shiloh's death comes up, or when I start to feel a little sad. I want to make sure I'm on track. Right. You know. Um, I, I, I would highly recommend going to a therapist, you know, whether, you know, and one of the things I wanted to say that I caught a minute ago is we're talking about suicide now, but this is not only about su suicide, it's about depression. Right. And depression, in, as far as statistics, is very high. Yeah, a lot of people are, have been depressed or know somebody who's depressed, and it's interesting that you say that because even when I went to the therapist, she said, I don't understand why you would do this. She's like, you know, try and help me to understand. She's like, you don't do drugs, you don't drink, you don't. Exactly. I mean, she's like, you're a straight A student, you're, you know, and it's like, I don't know. I can't, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just sad. You know, I have, you know, so sometimes there are no signs like they're changing their hair color or their grades are slipping because I didn't have any of that. But 